The rumor mill continues to swirl, connecting Paul George to the Philadelphia 76ers with the chances of him opting out of his contract and coming to Philadelphia on a max deal to join Tyrese Maxey and Joel Embiid seeming more and more likely. However, there are some skeptics. And I don't know about you guys, but when I think, what should the Philadelphia 76ers do? I want nobody else but Evan Turner's opinion. So Evan Turner took to his podcast and jumped on here and said, Paul George's former teammate, Evan Turner, says George has a, quote, history of not showing up and believes a duo and Paul of Paul George and Joel Embiid would be, quote, soft. Quote, I never met a human that would let a media rumor drive his energy or personality. You know how soft that team's going to be if he and Embiid go together? It'd probably be the most skilled duo ever since Kobe and Shaq. So him essentially saying that the skill would be there with Paul George and Joel Embiid, but that neither of these guys are cut for it. Now, another guy that is not cut for it is Evan Turner himself, that we all remember front and center here in Philadelphia of him not living up to expectations after being the number two overall pick in the draft, that the dude was a boss coming straight out of Ohio State. And I know he's done a nice job kind of conveying himself into the media, speaking through that mouthful of marbles that he seems to constantly have in there and finding a career for himself. But the bottom line is the dude did not cut it then. And I'm not sure if I'm taking his word from a talent standpoint. Now, I will say that this quote specifically when saying that I never met a human that would let the media rumor drive his energy or personality. I don't think of Paul George like that. So I'm curious what specifically he's speaking on here. I haven't really seen any situations. I know that Paul George has his own podcast is a little bit of an interesting guy off the court. But to be honest, like there's nothing that I have as far of an, 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 an attitude things for some of the other guys we've talked about the Ben Simmons, the James Harden, the Jimmy Butler, those are front and center. You understand what it is. There hasn't really been one of those issues with Paul George. And even when you think to the year where he essentially was left in basketball purgatory out in Oklahoma City, the dude continued to show up and hoop. So I'm not exactly sure what he's speaking on there. I would love to hear more about it, but I don't think it's anything that quite makes sense in my mind. Now, I did want to speak a little bit more on the likelihood and why we are in the situation that we are. For starters out in Los Angeles, we know that they just had a first-round exit at the hands of the Dallas Mavericks. We know that the Clippers made their all-in push this season with the Sixers on the other side of things, shipping off James Harden in, in the deal that should be remembered as the Nico Batum trade. But that James Harden made his way out to Los Angeles, and then they tried things with this trio of James Harden, Kawhi Leonard, and Paul George. And what did it do? First-round exit. So that's where things are they're at a very difficult crossroads for the Los Angeles side of things. There's been plenty of chatter about the new arena opening up, them needing to sell tickets, all these blah, blah, blah. And also from the salary cap perspective, that they've already invested in these guys quite a bit. That if Paul George walks, it's not like they're going to free up this cap space to go and sign a new guy. That they are well above the limit, well above the tax, and pretty hamstrung to be motivated to getting a deal done. And I wanted to dive into a couple of different conversations here. For starters, on the Sixers side of things, that the Philadelphia Inquirer's Keith Pompey reported Thursday that the Philadelphia 76ers' desire to acquire Paul George in free agency is the NBA's worst kept secret. Pompey added that there are some who expect both sides to reach an agreement. The Sixers can clear up to $76.8 million in salary cap space next year per spot rack, so the addition of a major star feels inevitable. George can opt out of his contract with the Los Angeles Clippers this offseason and will be one of the top free agents on the board if that happens. To add to this a little bit, Paul George has been able to sign his extension this entire season, and it has not happened. And Kawhi Leonard kind of set the standard by taking slightly below what the max would be to his. And I know I've brought this up before, but a max contract, all max contracts are not created equal. That a max contract to each player is something individualized and different based on what they have on their resume. The All-Stars, the All-NBA appearances, awards, all these things impact what that dollar sign is. So for Paul George and for Kawhi Leonard, that number is still slightly different. Now Kawhi accepted what is slightly below the max. What seemed to be as a message to, I want to be keeping this team together. I want you guys to buy in in the same way. We should all sacrifice a little bit there. And Paul George does not seem to have quite that same mindset. So what this says here is in the wake of their first first round loss to the New York Knicks, the Sixers can now create nearly 65 million in cap space, slightly below the past calculations, but in the ballpark, which is more than enough to fit George's $49.4 million max salary next year. According to ESPN's Brian Winhurst, George is, quote, the player at the top of their list, and Winhurst believes that the Sixers will be willing to offer him a full max contract. Even if George prefers to stay with Leonard in LA, he can leverage the Sixers' interest in him against the Clippers in contract talks. The Sixers can offer George a four-year max deal, 
worth up to a projected $212.2 million, which is only $8.9 million shy of the most the Clippers can offer. George has the over 38 rule to thank for that. So that has to do with, of course, them not being in the long-term commitment. This is something that did benefit the Sixers in these James Harden negotiations, although we know that that problem is directly tied to this situation as a whole. But anyway, what one of the main points that I wanted to get here and why I have not closed the door on Paul George for starters, the theory of him is the exact player that they need. And the prime Paul George, I think still people undersell how good he was. But when you think back in the Pacers day of him going head to head with the LeBron James of the Heat, the dude was cold. He was that guy. But he's not quite anymore. And that is the concern of, of what level is he regressing? How fast is this going downhill? And those are questions that we don't directly know the answer to. But what has changed my mind and made me a little bit more optimistic about the potential Paul George signing here? is you don't have to dig into these assets to go get him. You send him that blank check, you hand him that max deal, and these Sixers keep alive their three first-round picks or four first-round picks on the three pick swaps that you still have. So maybe it is worth rolling the dice, seeing what Paul George has left, and then attacking through the trade market through the rest. Maybe it is worth it to trade that 16th pick to the Bulls for an Alex Caruso type player. And then we're talking about that as the backcourt rather than, you know, bringing in this slew of role players. So the fact that you can just go out and sign this guy, essentially not digging into any of the potential moves down the line, I do think is appealing. And again, the, the theory of Paul George is exactly what the Sixers team needs. He'll be the truest wing that has ever been on this roster in the Joel Embiid era that includes Jimmy Butler because of what a willing shooter that Paul George is. And there was a point in time where Paul George was among the best defenders in the NBA. Now that was many years ago to this point, pre-leg break, I would even go as far as to say, but there was a time where he used every bit of his length to be effective. And to dive into his stats fully, that through his career, Paul George averaging 20.8 points per game, 6.3 rebounds, 3.7 assists, 1.7 steals, a career 38.5% three-point shooter on 6.8 attempts per game. And just last season, Paul George, as an all-star, averaged 22.6 points per game, 3.5 assists, 5.2 rebounds, 1.5 steals, shot 41.3% on 7.9 three-point attempts per game. Those are great numbers there. Like, that is real deal all-star numbers. Now, my pushback here and my concern, now I've shout out to Dime Dropper and a couple of the other Los Angeles Clippers uh, creators that I have been in contact with over there. I've been po- posing the question of, Who is more of a loser as a basketball player, Paul George or James Harden? And what is scary to me is there has not been a consensus to either side, that I've certainly heard both opinions there. Now, we lived out the James Harden experience here. There's the highest of the highs and there's the lowest of the lows. Paul George is a little bit cut from that same mold, that he has his games where he's going to look like the best player on the floor. And then he has those games where you're like, wait a minute, Paul George played tonight? Now, my quick pushback to that is for all the concern over the Sixers just handing out another Tobias Harris contract, This version of Paul George is still better than any version of Tobias Harris, that the prime, the peak of Tobias Harris still has never made an all-star game. And even Paul George on what was sort of a down year for him still was an all-star. And I know that's not everything, that it does not matter whether you're in that, you know, recreation game or not. But the bottom line is he's still being recognized for his talents. But to compare the Paul George and James Harden here, I did think this was interesting. So to look at them side by side for this season, James Harden playing 72 games, Paul George playing 74 games. Paul George leading the way from a scoring standpoint with 22.6 points per game compared to the 16.6 by James Harden. Paul George out-rebounding him slightly, although that's 5.2 to 5.1. Harden, of course, uh, equips him in the, the assist category, but the efficiency numbers are in Paul George's favor, and this, I do think, is a really good sign. 47.1% from the field, really solid. 41.3% from beyond the three-point arc, very good. The free throw rate, over 95%, very impressive there. His effective field goal percentage, his PER, all very impressive. So there's some great signs when looking at these from the pure numbers standpoint. And also, I do think it is worth giving a little bit of love to Daryl Morey for kind of taking the grenade and tossing that into Los Angeles with James Harden. That I do think there's a real world that at the minimum, I don't think the James Harden situation has helped this current Paul George situation. At the maximum, it has pushed Paul George more out the door. I don't think that's the case, but I do think the results are the results. And the fact that this team is sitting at home already this offseason is pretty telling to why this organization is a little nervous about everyone. Everyone's looking at each other being like, is this actually the route of the championship? Now, the final answer here and the final conversation point is, is this all depends on what Paul George wants to do. Now, what is your goal? What do you care about for the rest of your career? Do you want to retool, win a championship? Because if that is the case, I do believe the Sixers are a better opportunity than the Clippers for Paul George. 
Or do you want to stay out near your hometown, live on the West Coast, live in Los Angeles, and kind of chill out the rest of your career? Or even another team that has been rumored in the mis- the, into the mix is the Orlando Magic. Do you want to go down in Florida? Just have a nice time. Now, every guy is wired differently. All these guys are some of the most competitive human beings in the, in the world, but there is a point where you get over it to an extent. If Paul George still has that hunger in his gut, Come to Philadelphia and let's win a ring. But if that is not the case, it won't be a fault of the Sixers. So for now, they're kind of the mercy of what Paul George wants to do. But I will say, and just hammer on and leave on this point, is that it should be noted as it should. it is significantly more appealing to bring in a guy without giving up any assets than it should be to leverage the future to bring in a guy. Even if Paul George is not quite the Paul George you hoped he would be, to bring in that caliber of talent purely through the free agent market generally would be the best Sixers signing of this decade, probably dating back far longer than that. That When you think about it right now, think about the greatest Sixer that has been signed. We'll just keep it in the Joel Embiid era. It's probably Al Horford, maybe even P.J. Tucker. Those are the names we're talking about. Paul George, a little bit of a different story than each of those guys there. So hopefully the sales pitches are coming. Hopefully that Paul George is getting sick of life out in LA and all the speculation and everything else that's going on in between those walls here. But for now, these Sixers have to play their waiting game, keep their cards stacked, and be ready to pounce when the opportunity presents itself. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I specifically would love to hear your thoughts on, you know, bringing in a guy, the value of not having to give up assets and that type of conversation, your thoughts on that. Appreciate each and every one of you guys for tuning into this video here. Make sure you are smashing that subscribe button. It helps us a ton here at Sixers Digest to keep the family growing, keep the support coming, and we're going to be with you start to finish this crazy offseason and everything moving forward. So once again, make sure you are smashing that subscribe button, dropping a like on the video and some comments. Let me know you're listening. I'll be back, be back talking to you next time. Peace.